So. Commissioner, in our opening address last week, we identified six consumer credit, six consumer credit topics that would be addressed in the course of these hearings. Last week and this morning, you have heard evidence about the first of those topics being home loans. The topic add-on insurance. As we explained during our opening address, there are a number of forms of add-on insurance. One common form is consumer credit insurance, which is sold with a number of credit products, including credit cards, personal loans, home loans and car loans. It is designed to protect consumers if they're unable to meet their credit repayments in circumstances where they have lost income because of disability or involuntary unemployment, uh, have become permanently disabled or have died. For many Australians, the purchase of consumer credit insurance for forms experience of acquiring a consumer credit product, whether or not that was the consumer's original intention. The insurance premiums for that product will sometimes be added to the loan. ASIC has taken the view that consumer credit insurance has long been associated with poor consumer outcomes in Australia and overseas including consumers being unaware that they have purchased the insurance, consumers being ineligible to make a claim on their insurance policy, and consumers who are able to make a claim but receive little back in comparison to what they have paid in premiums. During our opening address last week, we noted that since 1 July 2010, over $128 million in remediation has been paid to consumers by financial services entities as a result of entities as a result of particular conduct in connection with add-on insurance. In July last year, ASIC convened a consumer credit insurance working group. ASIC expects that this working group will progress a range of reforms, including a deferred sales model for consumer credit insurance sold with credit cards over the phone and in branches. The deferred sales model, which is expected to form part of the revised banking code of practice, will mean that consumers cannot be sold a consumer credit insurance policy for their credit card unless at least four days uh, have lapsed since they applied for their credit card as long as their application was made over the phone or in a branch. In ASIC's view, this reform will reduce the risk that a customer will feel pressured to purchase the insurance product or put purchases a product that does not meet their needs. As at August 2007, the working group was also considering improvements that could be made to bank sales, be made to bank sales practices for consumer credits on credit cards sold online and improvements that could be made in respect of other loan products in all sales channels. It appears that some changes to the online process for selling consumer credit insurance may also form part of the revised banking code of practice. Our consideration of consumer credit insurance in these hearings will focus on a case study that concerns the sale by CBA, two types of consumer credit insurance, being credit card plus insurance and loan protection, pro and protection product for home and personal loans insurance. In its submissions to the Commission, CBA acknowledged that approximately 65,000 of its customers had purchased Credit Card Plus insurance in circumstances where they may not have met the employment eligibility criteria in the product terms and therefore may not have been able to claim benefits under the policy in the event of disability or involuntary unemployment. CBA acknowledged that refunds of approximately $10 million, including interest, had been made to those customers as at the date of CBA's submission on the 29th of January this year. CBA also acknowledged that a further 20,000 customers had purchased the loan protection product uh, in circumstances where they too may also have employment eligibility criteria to claim benefits under the policy. CBA indicated that its investigation into this conduct was at an early stage, but that it estimated that approximately $3.4 million of refunds would need to be made to consumers. Both of these events were described by CBA in its submission 
as conduct falling below community standards and expectations. They were not described as misconduct, as that term is used in the terms of reference. Commissioner, I will, short Commissioner, I will shortly call evidence from a purchaser of a CBA Credit Card Plus insurance policy, Ms Irene Savidis. Ms Savidis purchased the insurance policy at the same time as applying for a credit card with CBA in circumstances where she was not eligible to claim on parts of the policy due to being unemployed at the time. We will then hear evidence from Mr Clive Van Horen, CBA's Executive General Manager of Retail Products. Mr Van Horen's evidence will touch on a number of topics of interest to the Commission. Each topic of interest is the processes that CBA had in to ensure that these products would only be sold to consumers who could obtain value from the products, in the sense that they would be eligible to make claims under all parts of the policy. A second topic of interest is the way CBA responded when it became clear that Credit Card Plus insurance and loan protection product insurance were being sold to people who were not eligible to make claims under parts of the policy due to their employment status. A third topic of interest is CBA's decision a fortnight ago to cease selling Credit Card Plus insurance and part of the loan protection product. Commissioner, I now call Ms Irene Savidis. Ms Savidis, do you mind coming into the witness box there? Uh, just before we start, Ms Savidis, can I ask you whether you'd prefer to take the oath? Yes. Or you'd take the oath? Thank you. Swear the witness, please. I swear by Almighty God. I swear by Almighty God. That the evidence I shall give. That the evidence I shall give. Will be the truth. Will be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. Now, Ms. Savitas, do sit down, and uh, if I may be so bold as to suggest it, take a big deep breath, and then we'll start. Go on, Ms. Orr. Ms. Savitas, could you please state your full name? Yep, Irene Savitas. Thank you. And you've provided your address to the Royal Commission. Uh, what is your occupation, Ms. Savitas? Home duties. Home duties, Home did duties. you say? Yes. Thank you. And Ms. Savitas, did you receive a summons requiring you to attend to give evidence today? Yes. Have a, you have the summons there? Yes. I tender that summons, Commissioner. At 1.91, summons to Irene Savitas. Ms. Savitis, Ms. Savitis, did you make a state commission on the 9th of March 2018? Yes. And do you have that statement there with you? Yes. I tender that statement, Commissioner. Exhibit 1.92, statement Irene Savitis. Now, Ms. Savitis, what bank do you bank with? Commonwealth Bank. Thank you. And how long have you banked with CBA? Since I was a child. Since I was a child. And in January 2013, what, what accounts did you hold with CBA? Um, just a standard savings and a joint um, goal saver account with my father. What was the goal saver account for? Um, that was, my dad was the primary account holder and that was a savings account for my oldest son at the time. Mm -hmm. How many children do you have, Ms. Savitas? Now two. Thank you. How old are they? Seven and two and a half. Thank you. Now, in January 2013, did you receive a notification on um, your CBA internet banking page that you had been pre-approved for a credit yes. card? Yes. And did you pursue that pre-approval? Um, not straight away, but I did. Later? Yeah. Yes. And was it October 2014 when you applied for that credit card? Yes. And what was your income at the time you applied for the credit card? It was roughly around $1,260. $1,260? Yep. Over what period? A fortnightly. A fortnight. Thank you. And what was the source of your income? Um, Centrelink benefits. Thank you. And how did you apply for the CBA credit card? Online. And when you applied, did you nominate a credit limit for the credit card? No. Uh, what information did you include on the online form? Um, your name, address, um, if you have any children, um, how much your income is, 
so provided them the income statement, um, yeah, pretty much just all your personal details and anything about how much money you get. Could I show you a document, Ms. Savitas? Yes. I just need a doc ID. This is an exhibit to Mr. Van Horen's statement. It's CVH one, and the doc ID. I'm sorry, I have it. Is CBA zero five zero seven triple zero two triple zero one. If you look on the screen there, we, if the system is working, it should be there. Yep. Now this is a document that's been provided to the Commission by CBA, uh, Ms Savitas. Uh, you have been shown this document? Yes. Uh, and it, it appears to be a paper representation of the information you would have submitted on the screen yes. uh, when completing the online application. Is that right? Yes. And do we see there, uh, if we turn to 0002, we see your income. Mm -hmm. Now that appears to be annual income based on some information you would have provided. Do you recall whether the form asked for fortnightly or monthly? Um, it would have been fortnightly if yes. I had put income putting the income amount in. And we see there a costs and risk date in 25, so that appears to record uh, 6 October 2014 using the American date system. Yes. That was the date on which you um, submitted your application online. Yes. Thank you. Uh, and having uh, reviewed this document provided by CBA, does it accord with your recollection of the information that you put into the online form yes. when you applied? Thank you. Now, do you recall uploading, uh, I won't tender that document yet, Commissioner, because it will form part of Mr Van Horen's statement. Do you recall <coughs> uploading any documents uh, to the CBA website when you completed this online form? Yeah, my Centrelink income statement. Yes. And do you recall seeing anything on the online form in relation to insurance? Um, I can't recall exactly, but I do remember reading something. You, you've said in your statement at paragraph eight mm -hmm. uh, that you may have read something to the effect of 55 cents of every $100 and that you don't remember whether or not you ticked any box about taking out credit card insurance when you applied for the credit card online. Yep, that's correct. When you decided that you were going to apply for a credit card, did you intend to also purchase credit card insurance? No. Uh, and at the time you had completed the online form on the CBA website, did you believe you had applied for uh, insurance? No. Now, well, I wasn't too sure at the time. Yes. And following submission of the form, were you told the result of your application? Yes. Uh, was your credit card conditionally approved? Yes, that's correct. And were you told of a credit limit? Yes. Do you recall what that was? Yes, 4,000. Thank you. And after you received that conditional approval, did you receive any correspondence from CBA? Um, I think it was on the same, the same letter that said conditionally approved. It asked for... Um, like um, if I haven't already it said to provide any other documents, so any identity, IDs, things like that. And I'll, I'll have brought up onto the screen the first exhibit to your statement, which is RCD 0014001001. Is that a copy of the email that you received from CBA on the day that you yes. submitted this application on 6 October 2014? Yes. And you see under the heading what you need to do that you were told if you haven't already, you had to upload your proof of income. Yes. Uh, and then further information was provided about the sorts of documents that could be used. Yes. Um, do you recall going into a CBA branch after receiving this correspondence? Yes. Was the branch that you went to close to your home? Yes. And what happened when you went to the branch? 
um, provided them with um, my licence for photo ID. And do you recall any conversation at the branch in relation to Credit Card Plus insurance? Yeah, I, I did speak to someone about it, but I can't recall everything about it. Uh, you've explained what you recall of that conversation in paragraph 11 yes. of your statement. Um, you explained there that the staff member gave you the impression that you should take out insurance with your credit card because it would be a good thing to do. Can, can you explain what gave you the impression that you should take out the insurance? Um, basically the way they spoke to me, they were telling me it's good for me, it will benefit me, it'll help me in the long run if anything happened to me. Um, you know, I explained to her like how like I wasn't working because she said if I stopped working that would, you know, it would help cover any sort of costs that I couldn't afford, for example. Um, yeah, and when I told her I wasn't working, she said I s can still claim on it, basically, it will still help me. Yeah, so she just kept repeating the, themselves by saying that I should get it and it'll help me, it's good for me. Did she say anything to you about the cost of the insurance yeah, policy? Yeah, it's just like a small cost, like, you know, like a cup of coffee every month or something like that, she said. Okay. All right. Um, and by the time you'd left the branch on that day, had you agreed to purchase Credit Card Plus insurance? Um, just a moment. I can't recall if it was the exact that exact day that I said yes to them or not, mm -hmm. but I do recall eventually after speaking, you know, that yeah they said to add it onto the credit card. Could I ask you to look at um, your, the exhibits to your statement, yes. um, Ms. Savides? The the first one I'd ask you to look at is your second exhibit, RCD 0014001003. That's a letter from uh, CBA to you on the 7th of October 2014, the day after you yes. submitted your online application, advising you that um, your application had been approved. Yes. You had a low fee form of credit card, is that right? Yes. And on the same day, did you receive the document which is Exhibit 3 to your witness statement, RCD 0014-0001-0007. Yes. A letter from Cominsure to you, welcome to Credit Card Plus. Yes. So uh, do we see from that, Ms Savitas, that by the 7th of October, the day after you um, submitted your online application for the credit card, Cominsure had... Um, sold you the Credit yes. Card Plus insurance product? Yes. Uh, and could I ask that we turn to point zero one one in that second letter from Cominsure? This is the policy schedule in relation to your Credit Card Plus <coughs> policy. Do you see their monthly premium 55 cents per $100 of the closing balance on your monthly credit card statement. Yes. Um, do you think this is where you saw the reference to 55 cents per $100? I think so. Yes. Now, can you tell the Commission how you went having purchased this insurance policy with making the premium payments? Mm -hmm. At first it was okay at the start. But after a short time, things were getting difficult in money-wise. So I basically was trying to find a way to reduce, if there was a way to reduce um, my credit card payments. And the only thing I could figure out by looking at the statements was the insurance. I didn't think, it didn't seem that it would benefit me. Um, so I thought to try and take it off or turn it off. They said that I could turn it off whenever I wanted to. So yeah, that was the, the first thing I tried to do. So did you try then to cancel your insurance yes. policy 
And how many times do you think you tried to Multiple cancel? Multiple times. And can you explain what happened when you tried to cancel the policy? Um, they kept telling me that it was... You know, it's important that I didn't do it, didn't cancel it, because it was good for me. That you know, if something happened to me, it would really help me. Um, I, they didn't really give me, I guess, an exact specific on how it would help, because I told them if I'm not working, how would it, you know, it's not going to help. Um, yeah, I guess they would say something like, you know, if you were terminally ill, and I didn't think that I was going to get that sick. So, yeah, they just kind of kept pushing it on me, saying, you know, it's good for you, it'll help you. I just felt um, pressured or um, kind of like, you know, no matter what I said, it was the opposite. So I, I couldn't, can I felt like I couldn't cancel it. And were you speaking to people in branches or on the phone? Both. Okay. Um, and did you eventually succeed in cancelling yes. your credit card plus insurance policy? Yes. Uh, could I ask you to look at your, the fourth exhibit to your statement, RCD 0014-001-0013? Yes. We see there um, a letter from Cominsure on 1 May 2015 uh, cancelling your policy. Yes. Did you ever make a claim on your credit card plus insurance policy, Ms Savitas? No. Now, could I ask that you look at the fifth exhibit to your statement, RCD 0014-0001-0015. Yes. Is this a letter that you received from Cominsure, uh, if we could pan back a little bit so Ms Savitas could see the date, on the 16th of January 2018? Yes. And by this letter, Cominsure told you that you might be entitled to a refund yes. from Cominsure of $88.73? Yep. What did you think when you received this letter, Ms Savitas? Um, it was a little bit kind of confusing, I guess, at first. It was like, why have they sent me this? Um, yeah, so as it says on here that I may not have been working, which I wasn't, so that's when I kind of seek legal advice about <coughs> getting a full refund, if possible. Did you have any contact with CBA after you received this letter? Yeah, I did call them up to ask about an extension because it's specified on the letter that you have 30 days to contact them. Yes. Um, so I was a bit worried in case if I didn't call them or accept it by that 30 days, does that mean it would be cancelled maybe, I thought? So that's why I called them up and asked for some sort of extension. And the lady told me that, yeah, I can call any time after it and I could still claim that um, the refund. And is the next exhibit to your statement, RCD 0014-0001-0017, an email from a person at Cominsure to you on the 13th of February this year? Yes. That you received after the phone call that you're referring yes. to? Yes, that's correct. Um, now, have you received anything else from CBA since this time? Um, after that, the only thing I received is, which is on the last one, it was a card from the bank. Yes, and you provided a copy of that card to the Royal Commission, yes. Ms. Savita. So this is a card and in a handwritten envelope that yep. you've retained. Yes. Uh, a, uh, a card headed, just a note to say, is this the card yes, you're that's referring correct. to? With a handwritten message inside it. Yes. Now you've exhibited a copy of that card to your witness statement as Exhibit 17. Uh, the card is from Cominsure. Just a note to say, Dear Irene, thank you so much for your time and understanding with Cominsure. We thank you for your ongoing loyalty. So that's the card that you received, the handwritten card from Cominsure, Ms. Savitas? Yes, that's correct. Do you know when you received this? It was Ms. the 28th Savitas? of March. The 28th of March. I um, think you've dealt with this in your witness statement. Yeah, I think it was pretty. I'm pretty Ms. Savitas, at paragraph 23. Yeah, 28th of February, sorry. The 28th of February, you received this card. This year. This year. This year. So a matter of... Sorry uh, about that. A matter of weeks ago. Quick. Yes. Uh, I, I tended this card. The, the copy is annexed to Ms Savita's statement, but I tended the original as well, Commissioner. 
Exhibit 1.93, what shall I call it, card <coughs> from Common Shore to Savitas. Uh, Received on 28 February. Yes, has it got a, a uh, franking date on the envelope? That'll, thanks. Not a clear one that we could see, Commissioner. There we are. Uh, received 28 Feb 18. <coughs> Have you had any, had any further contact with CBA since this time, Ms Savitas? No. Thank you. The preceding contact with CBA before this card came out of the blue other than the uh, letters you've t told us about. Do you ever get any other greeting card from them? Not that I can recall. I don't think I've ever received uh, a card like this. And the, the card is signed by HZ, Ms Savitas. Do you know who HZ is? No. Thank you. I have no further questions yes, for Ms Savitas, Commissioner. Does anybody other than CBA seek leave to cross-examine Ms Savitas? Yes, Mr Sherry. Don't have any questions, Commissioner. Yes. Thank you very much, Ms Savitas, uh, coming and giving your evidence. You may bow. Thank you. Thank you.